morning. Ah, uh, well, I don't need to welcome Dickina Cecilia. How is your body? I don't need to say much about her because she is a person that by the time she mounts this altar, all of you will definitely fall in love with her. She carries God. And I'm not exaggerating. Her life is a testimony to me. Uh, her mother, uh, I, she me were around. She's not around. Her mother is like a mother to me also mm, since we've met. Since we've met. This is my daughter. Like I said, she's a child of destiny. She's someone with simplicity of art. She's a lover of God. And then not only that, she carries grace. She's not single, she's happily married. And then she's a brain box and she's beautiful she's a publisher she has published few books amen and one thing i love i that i cherish so much ah. i couldn't imagine someone working and after taking a salary she will give a salary either to god or to pure people either to the church or to the poor people. I remember when our mother came to the pastor about my brother from Oyo. But the Yoshi mama, she said, she said, to the Magba salary, I go see church. She carries destiny. And I'm so convinced that many that will listen to her this morning, spontaneously, your destiny will open. And thank God, we are in our month of destiny. So, she is the founder and CEO of, of Corporate Church, a marketing and communication solution for churches, ministry, and Christian executives. <laughs> With salvation style of welcome. Shall we rise? Jam your hands together as I invite to the microphone, daughter of Zion, in respect of Adeshewa Greg Igodalo. I love my daughter. God bless you. Please give the hand to Jesus. Please give it to Jesus. Please give it to Jesus. Please give it to Jesus. It to Jesus. It's not a cliche. Give it to Jesus. It's not my own. I don't even need it. So please give it to Jesus. Please give it to Jesus. Please give it to Jesus. The Holy One of Israel. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Eru Don't go kiji kiji. The one who was, the one who is and is to come. The one that never fails. The one that never changes. He is the God of gods. He's the King of kings. He's the I am that I am. He's our God. He's our God. He's a kind God, a merciful God, our helper, our teacher, our leader, our strong tower. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's the one that says a thing and he will bring it to pass. He's a Romanisha fire tea. He's the God that sends his word. And the Bible says that word must do what he says it should do. Every word, every promise of God hanging over your life. Every word that is yet to be fulfilled. Every word that seems like, oh, it wants to embarrass me, Koshele. It's not happening. Every word that is putting you in a place of worry. Every word that is putting you 
in a place of anxiety. Everything that you have lost hope concerning. Everything that causes you to cry when no one sees it. Inkasu preketelike zuta halagada. Epreko soto predish kelegade. I decree a release. 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 Somebody does not understand. I decree. I declare and I prophesy every word that is yet to be seen in your life every word that is yet to be manifested in your life every glory that is yet to be revealed in your life in this season in this moment in this hour in the name of Jesus let it be revealed in the name of Jesus let it be revealed in the name of Jesus let it be revealed in the name of Jesus let it be revealed in the name of Jesus let it be revealed the Lord said to me, said the month of October is the month of reward. And I'm bringing that grace to this house this morning. When I checked the meaning of reward, he said it is something that is given. Because of somebody's effort, because of somebody's service, it is a recognition. I pray for you. In this month, you will be recognized. I said in this month, you will be recognized. In that place where you have been rejected, in this month, you will be rewarded. In this month, you will be rewarded. In this month, you will be rewarded. We've not started. But the Lord says, I should decree. Daniel was in his room. David was in his house. And they were looking for somebody. They were not there. The Lord has asked me to speak to you today concerning the help of God. Many of us have been asking for help from people. You have looked at your uncles. You have looked at your aunties. You have looked at your siblings. But Daniel and David, they were not in the palace. They were not there. In fact, in the case of Daniel, the king had a dream and was looking for who to interpret it. And suddenly, somebody says suddenly, the mother walked in. The person that will speak on your behalf for you to be rewarded. Let them show up in the name of Jesus. And the mother of the king showed up. I said, oh, there's somebody. He worked for your father. He's the one that helped your father to reign. His name is Daniel. And his God is with him. I pray your God will be with you. 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 And what nobody could do. What nobody could do. What nobody in the whole kingdom. In the whole palace. What they are paying those men for. They are paying astrologers. They are paying sorcerers. They could not do it. They can read stars. They can read destiny. And Daniel could do it. I decree and I declare a proper sign to your life. Whoever will come out for you to be remembered, for you to be revealed, and for you to be rewarded. In the name of Jesus, let them show up. Let them show up. Let them show up. God will do it again. The Lord will do it again. Somebody is saying, It's been long I've seen his hand. I pray. He will do it again over your life. He will do it again over your finance. He will do it again over your business. He will do it again over your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, I commit myself into your hands this morning. And I ask that you do what only you can do. I ask that you will do what only you can do. Take the stage and have your way. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please a round of applause for Jesus. You can have your seat. I'm really grateful for Papa. I've known Papa for a very long time. I've known Papa before he knew me, but he does not know that I've known him. There was a time they used to do voiceovers for the church, and the contract was given to somebody that knows me. 
And I started recording for this church. I've never told him. This is the first time he's hearing it. I started recording vi uh, audio for this church before we ever met. Ten years after was when I met him. Ten years after. Somebody say, I will be faithful. They were not paying me, so don't think it was money. They were not paying me. The guy that contracted the job didn't pay me anything. <laughs> but it pays to be faithful. Daddy, I'm really grateful. Mommy, I'm really grateful. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you, my in Jesus' name. Daddy, God bless you in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Papa, we love you. Amy call me Monica. Say my soul for me. Papa, we love you. Mama, we blow you kisses. Mama, we blow you kisses. Praise the Lord. As I ask the Lord what He will have me speak to today. Fortunately, unfortunately, I'm not speaking. We are praying. We're going to pray. You can stand up, you can lie down, but make sure you're praying, and I'll tell you why. When God is set to do something in the life of a man, he puts it on an agenda. God is not a confused God. He doesn't look at your life and say, ah, this person's life is scattered. What do I want to do? No. There is a shadow that God works with. That is why when Jesus was supposed to leave a particular town, he had to pass through Samaria. Because on the agenda of God, there is a woman that will be at the well that he had to meet. See, my life is not a mistake. God has an agenda for me. And so we are in this month of October. And God said to me, I have an agenda for my children. He said, there is something that I am doing. And see, when God is doing something, he will do everything possible to push you so that you can align. It's not a mistake that you are in a revival month. It's not because you just want to come and pray. It's because there is an agenda of God. And that's why some people miss that season and they have to wait another cycle because God operates in seasons and cycles. I have a friend who, the Lord told her, he said, you're going to get married in 2017. I need you to really pay attention so that you will know how to pray very well. He said, you will get married in 2017. When 2017 came, all the instructions he gave her, she didn't do it. So towards the end of 2017, you know now, at the end of the year, towards the end of, you now start singing, uh, what's that song we used to say? Oh, don't love so me, yo. Then you start choking God and saying, Oh, Lua, the thing you say you will do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And she was praying. And the Lord said, You have missed the season. And you are going to wait another four years. I know what I'm saying. And this is not somebody said, I know her very well. So when God see the easiest form of prayer is the one you hear God say and you repeat it. In fact, that's the one that is the fastest. Before you open your mouth, because your heart is already aligned, pack, 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 you just see it happening. And God is saying that in this season, in this hour, I am aligning my children for what I've prepared for them. And it's not just for the month of October. It's for October, November, December. There is something powerful about the last three months in this year. I don't, know, I don't care what they call it. But in the agenda of God, you will end this year well. Amen. I said in the agenda of God, you will end this year well. Amen. I said in the agenda of God, you will end this year well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want us to open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 42. The title, if you're writing, is Behold the Help of God. Behold the Help of God. Of God I don't know if there's anyone here who men have tried to help you women have tried to help you and your Bible people will say one Syria go they want the whole world to know that they did something in your life they don't remember that they were just a channel for the blessing of God I don't know how many of you have been writing things concerning this year that you want to see. And you are saying, God, where is it? Behold the help 
of God. If you are satisfied, you are good, you don't have any issues, you know, you can just sit down, cross your leg and be clapping for Jesus. No need to pray. But if you know that before this year ends, something must happen. If you know that before the end of this year, something must happen for your children. Something must happen for your husband. Something must happen for your wife. Something must happen in your business. I pray to her. I ask that you pray. And you don't just pray. You pray with understanding. Isaiah 42. I'm going to start from verse 13. Thank you, Holy Spirit. While I was waiting, the Lord said to tell somebody. He said, don't praise me for what you want to get from me. I don't know who you are. There's a difference between praising God because he can give you something. And praising God because he is God. They are two different things. When you praise a person because of who they are, whether they give you or don't give you, you know that because of the capacity that they carry, they can deliver beyond what you ask. Just yesterday, a friend of mine shared a testimony with me. She said, I was only praying for my husband that God should please give him a walk. That God should please give him a walk. And this is somebody I've known since 22. And she said, that's the only prayer I've been praying. Do you know what God did? In the space of two months, should I tell you what God did? God woke somebody in UK. UK. God woke the person up. And the lady said, it was as if they put a gun to her head. And he said, thank you, sir. And he said, she just heard a voice saying, there is a pastor in Nigeria. You have to bring him. Now, 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 now. The guy was dragging you know. They sent him link. Oh, yeah, feel it. He was taking his time. It was his wife that saw the link. I said, ah, babe, I found out. You did not. In two months, he didn't only get the scholarship. The person that they woke up, that person paid their ticket money, booked their flight, every single thing. When the person finished, he said, oh, I didn't know that you have, a, a, I, didn't, I didn't know you have kids who will be sending money to your wife every month. When they say God sought somebody out. I heard that testimony yesterday. I said, what? When they say God did the beginning, did the middle, did the end, then it now went into the future. That's what it is. I pray for you. Heaven will sort you out. Heaven will sort you out. Heaven will sort you out. And she kept saying, the only thing I asked, is for God to give my husband a job. I don't know who is standing in the gap for somebody this morning. Maybe your own is the only thing I ask. Is for God to give my, my child a child. Maybe your own is the only thing I ask. Is for God to... Let, let, let her just marry. Let him, God will sort you out. Beyond your imagination. In the name of Jesus. Verse 13. Let me start from verse 10 so that you can shout to the Lord. Remember the instruction. Don't just praise God because of what you want to collect. Praise him because he is God. He says, sing to the Lord a new song. I thought instrumentalists would help me make some noise. Sing to the Lord a new song. And his praise from the ends of the earth. You will go down to the sea and all that is in it. You coastlands and you inhabitants of them. Let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices. I don't know if you understand that scripture. He said, let the places that are dry. Let the places where nothing grows out of. Let the places where nothing flourishes. He said, let the wilderness and its cities. Let them lift up their voice. Hey, hey. Let the places where it seems like God is not doing anything. I don't know who is sitting here today. If it feels like nothing is happening in your life, shout hallelujah. <laughs> if it feels like there is no tree, there is no seed, there is no fruit. I can't even see my front. I don't know what is behind me. I can't look to the left and I can't look to the right. Shout hallelujah! You know I say 
Somebody should shout hallelujah. My Bible does not tell me that heaven helps those who help themselves. If you check some, is it 10 or 12? It says the Lord helps the helpless. The Lord helps the helpless. So if you are okay, don't shout hallelujah. But if you know that you need help, don't look at anybody. I don't care if you have makeup on your face. If you know that you need help, you know your children need help, your business needs help. In fact, there's somebody in this house this morning. You are a man. Your business is crumbling. Where everybody thinks that you are okay. Hard for off right. You are in the presence of God. The presence of the helper. Will you shout hallelujah? I do me Stress. It is you I'm speaking to this morning. You're gonna do one more thing before you sit down. You know that you need help, and you are in a place where if God doesn't come through, nothing will happen. The Lord says you should jump on your feet, and as you are jumping, they are gonna sing that song. As you are jumping, the chains will be breaking. As you are jumping, clap your hands as you are jumping. Oh, jump, 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 jump. I move from zero. look through Psalm 46 and we'll pray. Please let me know when my time, the remaining 10 minutes. It says the villages that Kedah inhabits, let the inhabitants of Selah sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastland. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastland. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastland. Let them give praise, let them declare, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastland. Verse 13 says, The Lord shall go forth 
like a mighty man. That's where we're going to take our first prayer point from. It says, the Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. You're going to pray and say, Lord, in the remaining days in this year, go forth before me. Go forth before me like a mighty man. Go forth before me like a mighty man. Go forth before me like a mighty man. Go forth before me, oh Lord. Go forth my family. Go forth with my family. Oh, like a mighty man. Go forth before my business like a mighty man. Go forth before my ministry like a mighty man. Go forth before my husband like a mighty man. Go forth before my wife like a mighty man. Go forth before the works of my hands like a mighty man. Go forth before my career like a mighty man. In Jesus' name we are praying. He says, It shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. You are going to pray. Lord, concerning me, concerning my household, concerning my work. Steer up your seal like a man of war. Steer up your seal like a man of war. What you are saying is God, stand for me. What you are saying is be passionate concerning my matter. What you are saying is God, focus on me. What you are saying is God, give me attention. What you are saying is God, I'm the only one in this church today. So focus on me and give me me attention be passionate about my matter oh lord stir up your zeal like a man of war oh stir up your zeal like a man of war lord stir up your zeal like a man of war there's somebody in this meeting this morning in contrary something is against you you don't know it will you pray as the lord stir up your zeal stir up your zeal stir up your zeal Oh, before me, Lord, stir up your zeal. Before my children, stir up your zeal like a man of war. Before my business, stir up your zeal like a man of war. Before my ministry, Lord, stir up your zeal like a man of war. And then it says, He shall cry out. Yes, shout aloud. I want you to give me your loudest shout. Give me your loudest shout. Give me your loudest shout. In Jesus' name. You see, the shout of all of you combined together, it's not like the shout of the Lord. That's where I'm going to. Picture a lion on top of a building and roaring over the nations and that's what the scripture is saying that the Lord will cry out the Lord will cry out <laughs> the Lord will cry out with a loud shout I want you to focus on one thing just one thing focus on one thing where you want God to turn around just one thing and pray and say Lord cry aloud over this matter cry aloud over this matter cry aloud over this matter oh Lord shout over this matter when a person is shouting is it that he's shouting against or he's shouting for or he's shouting with or he's shouting through or he's shouting by oh pray this morning as the Lord cry out Concerning my marriage, Lord, cry out. Concerning my work, Lord, cry out. Concerning that wicked boss, Lord, cry out. Concerning my debts, Lord, cry out. Concerning my finance, Lord, cry out. Concerning that child, Lord, cry out. Can you ask God to shout aloud? I don't know if you can imagine a God who is the God of all gods crying out. I don't know if you can imagine it, but if God cries, if God cries, if God cries, the deed is done. Can you ask the Lord to cry out? Oh, shakala baria kusoto baria. Oh, sete le bregesi aga. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Shua.
against his enemies. I pray for you. I pray for your household. I pray for your work. I pray for your career. I don't know what we are. But I pray for that job where you are and it's stressing you out. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Heaven will prevail over your enemies. Heaven will prevail over your enemies. I send forth angels to fight on your behalf. I send forth angels with flaming swords to fight on your behalf. And I decree in this week, in this month, you shall see the Lord. Please have your sin. Then it says in verse 14, he said, I have held my peace a long time. He says, I have been still and restrained myself. God is telling you, he said, I've been too quiet on your matter. You've been crying, but I've been too quiet. He says, now I will arise. Now I will arise. And he says something. He says, now I will cry like a woman in labor. Let me give you context. Men, let me give you context. Women, we understand. But you see, men, when I was about to have my first child, my water did not break. So I got to the hospital. And I said, oh, you're already six centimeters later. I said, hey, okay. I drank kakamo. I drank kakamo. I ate takala. The doctor said, why are you eating? I said, they say I'm not giving up. And then my consultant came and said, did her water break? And they said, yes. And then he checked me. And he said, the water did not break. And then he examined me. And then he burst the sack. And as he burst the sack, he said, now, nah, now you go, no. Waiting the contraction. I thought he was joking. You see, when the pain came, my mother was on my head like this. I'll say off it all, off the fan, there's gold, there's gold, there's gold, there's gold. When the pain leaves me, I say, ah, there's heat, there's heat. And they say, God will cry out like a woman in labor. Why? Because it is time for your birthing. It is time for your birthing. And that's the assignment I came here for today. To push you as a midwife into your next level. To push you as a midwife into your next season. To push you as a midwife into the next best thing for you. He says, now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and I will gasp at once. He said, I will lay waste the mountains and the hills. God says, I will destroy what is too high. And I will upgrade what is too low. <laughs> you are going to pray. <laughs> Lord, do anything that you will do for my help to come. <laughs> Lord, anything that you will do, whether you will uproot something or you will uproot someone, possible if you can lay waste the mountains and lay waste the hills i don't care what your matter is tell the lord this morning i said level every mountain level every hill do as you know best to do for my help to come for my help to come for my help to come hey do what you can do Anything possible, Lord. Anything possible, Lord. For my help to come. 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 Kaye Shatelia. Ye kesete brekesiata. Eko to Zambradoshkiataya. I told you the testimony of my friend who somebody God had to wake up in the UK. This was somebody who does not call them. The person did not even know they had children. But God gave that person a compelling instruction. Can you ask the Lord this morning? I said, Lord, my help must come. My help must come. My help must come. My help must come. So do anything you can do. So do anything you can do. In Jesus' name we are praying. 
He says, I will lay waste the mountains and hills. I will dry up all their vegetations. Vegetations are things that people eat. But do you know what he did? He said he will dry it up. So some people will not be able to have access to something until they bless you. It happened to Haman. Sorry, it happened to the king and Mordecai. He could not sleep. Because somebody had to be honored. So in case you are wondering, where is this guy getting these prayer points from? The three wise men could not rest because of the star that they saw. And even though Herod told them, he said, when you get there, if you see him come back, they did not come back. Your rewarder will not become your destructor. Someone didn't hear me. If they listened to Herod, even though they brought him reward, they will destroy him. Your rewarder will not become your destructor. And he says, I will dry up all your vegetations. And I will make rivers, coastlands. And I will dry up the pools. He says, I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. You are going to pray. Lord, the old path is no longer working. That's what I'm saying. The old ways are not working. Lord, lead me to a new path. Lead me to a new rivers. Lead me to a new ways. Lord, lead me to a new ways. He says, I will break the blind by a way they did not know. Open my eyes, pray, and say, Open my eyes to where my help is. Open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. Open my eyes. For somebody, this prayer point that you are praying is actually a path to new business. Oh, please pray and say, Lord, lead me onto a new path. Lead me onto new relationships. Lead me onto new connections. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I have five more minutes. I'm trying to make sure that I don't use more than my time. He says, I will make darkness light before them. In Koton Shoko, you see everybody. What nobody is seeing solution in. Then God will now shine his light. I'm a perfect example. We have a marketing business. Please sit down for a bit. Towards the end of 2019, God now begins to tell me. I prayed and I said, God, what's the, what's the secret to the success of this business? And he said, stop teaching my church how to do online ministry. COVID-19 had not happened. Digital church had not happened. It did not make sense to me. Nobody was seeing it. It was darkness, but God's light was shining on it. And even though I didn't understand, I said, okay, I will do it. And then I started to do it. And I was talking about it. And people were looking at me as if I was mad. You know how God told Noah to go and build the ark and there was no rain now. And it was like it didn't make sense. The minute COVID-19 hit the world, everything changed for me and my family. So even, and I'm not saying that some people, it wasn't a hard time for them. What I'm saying is, in your own life, the places where nobody is seeing any good thing, heaven will shine light for you. You are going to pray. You will say, Lord, shine your light in everything dark around me. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Let your light shine in every darkness in and around my life. Every darkness in and around my life. Let your light shine. The Bible says it will give you treasures in dark places. That's what it says in Isaiah 45. Can you pray and say, Lord, let your light shine in and around my life i receive revelation i receive knowledge for the things that will liberate me i receive revelation i receive knowledge for the things that will liberate me in the name of jesus and finally somebody is going to like this particular prayer it says and crooked places made streets i know when we're in secondary school i think it's things fall apart I can't remember the book. The first page you read, you say, may your way be rough. The first line you will read in that book. 
but you are going to pray. We serve a God that smoothens crooked places, that untangles things that are tangled, that separates things that are joined together. We serve a God that makes life easy. Your life doesn't need to be hard. There is no glory in struggle. God does not get glory when you are struggling. If you did not know before, not today. Nobody around you will clap for Jesus if they can't see something. You are going to pray and say, Lord, make my paths. Everything that is difficult for me, Lord, make it straight. Make it straight. Make it straight. Make it straight. Smoothing every difficult part. He says, I will make the crooked places straight. This is God saying He wants to do this for you. I'm not the one saying it. I don't even have the power to do it. It's not in my capacity to do it. As the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, smoothing my crooked places. Smoothing my crooked places. Oh, Katabaraka Sekaya. Oh, somebody pray. Somebody pray. Let Provodo see at her. And I see something like a tractor grinding stones to powder. I see something like a tractor. Or maybe it's called a bulldozer. And it's grinding stones to powder. And it's grinding stones to powder. Can you ask the Lord this morning? Ask the Lord smoothing my difficult places. Make my life easy. Make my home easy. Make this easy for my children. Make this easy for my spouse. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to give us one prayer point. It's not in Isaiah 42. It's in Isaiah 37. The Bible was talking about God moving against everything that moves against you. Do you understand? God is moving. Let the evil wind be blowing like this. It will meet God and God will move it. Please pray this morning. And say, Lord, everything moving against my life. Everything moving against my destiny. Everything from my lineage. Everything from my land of nativity. Everything from my father's house. Everything from my mother's house. Every covenant that has been set and is working against my life this day. Every altar that has been raised and is working against my destiny. Jehovah, I ask this morning, move against everything moving against me. Lord, 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 move against everything moving against me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.